You're a female drag queen, and you sing, I f you in the bathroom when we went to dinner, your parents at the table. Yeah, that wouldn't fly in Gaza, although you would straight off a roof. That was a snippet from Bill Maher's patronizing open letter to queer singer Chapel Roan, who vocalized her intent to vote for Kamala Harris, but said that she wouldn't endorse her in part because of her position on Israel-Palestine. Now, if you watch the entire clip, Bill Maher chalks up her position to ignorance and assumes that she doesn't care about the violence on October 7th and only supports Palestinian human rights because she's been brainwashed by TikTok. And he also says that what's happening in Gaza isn't a genocide. And on top of that, he predictably says that she is supporting Hamas. He also makes a joke about how Chapel Roan blew up this year, just like the Hezbollah pagers. So he downplays violence and war crimes while trying to portray himself as morally superior to her because she's dumb and young and he just is uh, so much more older and wiser. But to Mar's point about Chapel Roan getting killed if she were to go to Gaza, I'll admit that he's probably right about that, but it wouldn't be because she's gay. As Anthony Fantano puts it, it'd be because she'd likely get bombed by the IDF since they're bombing everyone in Gaza. And I'm assuming more queer people in Gaza have been killed directly or indirectly by Israel for being Palestinian than they've been killed by fellow Palestinians for being queer. But queer people are not the only victims in Palestine. Out of the 40,000 plus Palestinians murdered in Gaza, 16,000 of them have been children, and 11,000 of them were women, and counting. Now, as Dropsite News reports, the IDF launched at least two missiles at refugees sheltering at the Al-Aqsa Hospital tent in central Gaza, and those missiles ignited a fire that burned people alive. And journalist Hamza Youssef shared this Instagram video from a witness who described the carnage, saying, I watched people being burnt alive in front of me. Nobody could do anything to stop it. Men women, children, all being burnt alive. I saw their soul leave them right before my eyes. And I can't show you what he's describing on YouTube, but the footage is out there if you wanna see it or if you don't believe me. And trust me, it is absolutely horrifying. There's one image of a hospital patient being engulfed in flames while they're still hooked up to an IV. That image is gonna haunt me for the rest of my life one of the many images out of this genocide that will haunt me for the rest of my life. And it's important to keep in mind, as Muhammad points out, every child you see with mangled legs being hopelessly carried, every person you see lit on fire, all the dust covered faces, they were a whole universe to themselves and everybody they knew. Lives as complex, joyful, and difficult as yours. So maybe that's why Chapel Roan has come to the conclusion that she's come to. Maybe because she sees suffering and she reacts like a human being. She acknowledges the inherent preciousness of human life that people like Bill Maher don't seem to acknowledge. People like Bill Maher bend over backwards to justify an actual genocide. I see it, you see it, he sees it. But his reaction is to think, actually, this is okay. And if you don't think that this is okay, and justified, you're a bad person. I'm the one who's morally superior. It's gross, and to make matters worse, he is cynically weaponizing Chapel Roan's own queerness against her to emotionally blackmail her, I guess, into supporting this genocide. I mean, I've lost count of how many YouTube comments I've seen just to me telling me that, hey, they'd throw you off a building in Gaza because I'm a queer man who also thinks that genocide is bad. But I mean, if I thought that death was a proportional penalty for homophobia, I'd have to support the IDF bombing my own family and the United States. Because guess what? My own family members are very homophobic. We have a lot of states that are extremely homophobic and transphobic. But guess what? I don't support that. I don't support homophobes getting bombed and burned alive. Queer people aren't going to be gaslit into supporting a fucking genocide because you think the victims deserve it. But invoking queerness is just one of many ways to justify this genocide because it makes the supporters of this genocide feel better about the genocide that they're supporting if they think there is a reason why we should be supporting it. But Bill Maher isn't alone because Twitch streamer Asmogold told his impressionable audience that the Palestinian genocide is justified because if it's not done to them, then it'll be done to us. 
if you want to consider a genocide as a systematic killing of a group of people, they have genocide built into Sharia law right now. So no, I'm not going to cry a fucking river when people who have genocide that's baked into their laws are getting genocided. I don't give a fuck. They're terrible people. It's not even a question. It's crazy that people don't see it that way. They'd be doing the same thing. Mm. And how much did they kill? As many as they can. They're not able to kill as many people as Israel because they don't have as many bombs and as many weapons. But if they did, they'd be doing the same thing. That's it. Just takes enough. That's right. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible. It kills people for their identity and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for. And it is an inferior culture in all ways. It is that simple. No, I don't feel bad for them. I don't feel sorry for them. I don't care. Depraved. I don't know how somebody like that can say that and still have fans. That right there is the same logic Nazis used literally to justify the Holocaust. As the Holocaust Encyclopedia explains, wartime propagandists universally justify the use of military violence by portraying it as morally defensible and necessary. To do otherwise would jeopardize public morale and faith in the government and its armed forces. Throughout World War II, Nazi propagandists disguised military aggression aimed at territorial conquest as righteous and necessary acts of self-defense. They cast Germany as a victim or potential victim of foreign aggressors as a peace-loving nation forced to take up arms to protect its populace to defend European civilization against communism. The war aims professed at each stage of the hostilities almost always disguised Nazi intentions of territorial expansion and racial warfare. This was propaganda of deception designed to fool or misdirect the populations in Germany, German-occupied lands, and the neutral countries. Now, I'm not saying that Asmogold is a Nazi, a repulsive, stinky, unclean fuck, sure. But a Nazi, I don't think he's a Nazi. But he is a perfect example of how effective fascist and eliminationist propaganda is. Politically, he's a standard reactionary American with a below average level of intelligence who was led to believe that it's okay to wipe out an entire group of people because if you don't kill them, they're going to kill you first. You're seeing firsthand how people get duped into supporting genocides. This is how it happens. It's racism and the otherization of the victims coupled with the fear that they pose a material threat to us. But Asmogold bases his support for genocide or lack of empathy, if we're being charitable, on this idea that Palestinians are inferior. He used the word inferior specifically because of Sharia law. But it's not just Muslim Palestinians who are being slaughtered. I don't know if he knows this, but it's Christian Palestinians as well. Justin Amash, who was a member of Congress, who's a Republican, had Christian family members who were slaughtered in a church. They were taking shelter in a church. The IDF bombed that church and killed them. Also, Capri Sun Poppy, who's a Christian Palestinian American, asked Asmogold, Hey, Asmogold, what about my quote unquote culture makes it okay to genocide my friends and family? And he goes on to add, You live in Texas. Multiple murders and hate crimes have occurred against the trans community. Clean up your own shit before you make suggestions on places you know nothing about. But you see, the difference is that we're the good guys. So the mere presence of transphobia or homophobia here which is present in literally every other country on the planet, that doesn't justify all of us being killed. Why? Well, because we're superior. We're not inferior like Palestinians. Therefore, even though other countries might think that our culture is pretty barbaric since we let shooters murder children in school classrooms and elect rapists like Donald Trump, well, that doesn't mean that our babies should be bombed, even though some other country might think that our culture isn't good enough. Their views about us would never justify them, some other country, burning our patients to death while they're in hospitals hooked up to IVs. On the flip side, everything they don't like about Palestinian culture justifies their extermination. Not because they actually think that these are valid reasons to murder an entire group of people, but because they're working backwards from the conclusion that Palestinian lives just aren't worth as much as American or Israeli lives. But to Capri Sun Poppy's point, 
it's kind of oxymoronic to justify a genocide as Asmagol did by saying the victims are genocidal when you're definitionally supporting genocide by justifying their deaths. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And if Hamas is representative of the average Palestinian, doesn't it logically follow that the U.S. government is representative of average Americans? I mean, if that's the case, it means we support this too and are therefore liable. So if another country chooses to punish us for what the American government does, then by our own logic, that's justifiable. I mean, get this. AP reports Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is examining a plan to seal off humanitarian aid to northern Gaza in an attempt to starve out Hamas militants, a plan that, if implemented, could trap without food or water hundreds of thousands of Palestinians unwilling or unable to leave their homes. Now, the article goes on to explain that the justification for this plan to literally starve hundreds of thousands of innocent Palestinians in northern Gaza hinges on the idea that the remaining Palestinians in that region are all enemy combatants and thus deserve it. And why are they enemy combatants? Well, because they haven't left that region. Now, if this plan does come to fruition, even though it is illegal for the United States to support a country and supply them with weapons if they are denying humanitarian aid, well, we all know that the Biden administration is still going to continue to support them and Trump would do the same if he was elected. So for all this talk about Palestinians being inferior because of their barbaric genocidal culture, it kind of seems like the same could be said about us. But odds are people like Bill Maher and Asmagold wouldn't take kindly to other countries genociding us using the same justification that we use to justify the genocide against Palestinians. Interesting, isn't it? But putting aside that double standard, there's no justification for genocide, ever, period. There's no justification. Anyone who is engaging in genocide justification or pro-genocide apologia, they are morally bankrupt. But in 2024 America, genocide apologia is not just common but socially acceptable. And Bill Maher and Asmogold are just two high-profile examples of pro-genocide propaganda in a branching media ecosystem that routinely engages in this type of Nazi-esque, eliminationist bullshit. New media, old media, independent media, mainstream media, it doesn't matter, it's everywhere. And one day, I genuinely believe that these genocidal screeds that we're seeing from people like Maher and Asmogold are going to be written about in future history books. And even though they smugly think that they're on the right side of history, as history has already taught us, they're on the wrong side of history. And they will be remembered as being psychotic genocide supporters who justified the indiscriminate slaughter of thousands of human beings. That is despicable. And anyone who supports these guys, who watches them, should maybe ask themselves, is this the kind of content that I should be consuming?